Good afternoon. It is my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker for today, Dr. Luis Eduardo Luna. Luis was born in Florencia in the Colombian Amazon. She studied philosophy and theology with his dearest fathers in Bogota in Spain. But he left the order to study Latin American literature at the Universidad Complutense de Madrid. In 1971, he met Terence McKenna, and he will tell us maybe a little bit more about that in a minute. Uh, and so he changed his life path and obtained an interdisciplinary MA and then a PhD in comparative religion. He taught Latin American literature at Oslo University and he, uh, his dissertation for his then PhD examined the use of the plant teachers such as ayahuasca among the mestizo population of the Peruvian Amazon. Luis Luna was named uh, Doctor of Human Letters by the San Lawrence University in 2002 and he has published several works and numerous papers on shamanism in the Amazon. In 2011, he retired from the Hankett School of Management in Helsinki and founded the Waziwaska Research Center for the study of psycho-integrated plants, visionary art and consciousness in Florianopolis, Brazil. Luna has been appointed as honorary research fellow at the University of Exeter in our department just this week, and he is providing a lecture in our MA in philosophy and psychedelics each year. He has been a keynote speaker at our recent conference on philosophy and psychedelic studies. And we will both together with Edith Rechka next week present a panel on decolonizing the psychedelic renaissance at the European Science Forum in Leiden. Um, Lu Luis Luna is a world leading expert on indigenous knowledge and healing practices. He published widely on the subject, including Ayahuasca Visions in 1991 with Pablo Amaringo and the Ayahuasca Reader, which I hope you very small, not really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, which was published in 2000 with Stephen White and uh, had a second edition in 2000. Thank you very much for being here with us, for working and uh, with us and supporting us. And oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Christine House Keller, for this invitation. Um, I have seen this room many times uh, online. So finally, it's very good to be here. Okay. <clears throat> I advance the slides from here. From here. Yeah. All right. Okay. So this is a, 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 a presentation that I, we, I prepared with Dale Millar, who I don't know if he's be online or, or not. Yeah. The situation in South Africa is very bad, and very few hours electricity. But anyway, <clears throat> so uh, this is a, a, in a conference uh, organized by Mc, Dennis McKenna which is a continuation of a conference which took place 2017. He made the second one in 2000 and, uh, some, uh, sorry, 1967, and then he organized another one in 2017, and just re recently he, in another conference in St. Gilles. And this is Dennis, and this is the, the conference. <clears throat> so <clears throat> first uh, introduction to uh, the island of uh, Mayambipe or Santa Catarina. <coughs> Here it is. This is the island. Um, it's a subtropical island. I'm going closer. Uh, the capital of Santa Catarina is Florianopolis, which is a city on both sides of the uh, of the the only bridge that is connecting the island with the main, mainland. A city of about 450 people. And this island was uh, um, practically devastated because this was one of the points of entry from boats coming from Europe into, into the Southern Atlantic. The boats stopped there to repair the boat, uh, to, to repair the boats. And uh, this area was, um, um, they were cultivating coffee, uh, sugarcane, and manioc. So all the big trees disappeared. Uh, and this is what has been happening with the uh, uh, Atlantic forest. Everybody talks about the Amazon, but we forget the, the, the coastal Atlantic forest. Some biologists say that it was as diverse or even more diverse than the Amazon, but only about from three to 7% of the different numbers uh, remain because of uh, 
<coughs> heavily impacted by human activity, including urbanization. All the big cities in Brazil are along the coast. The agriculture, coffee and sugar, we <laughs> practically, you know, <laughs> we drank, you know, the Atlantic forest and then cattle, of course, uh, logging and so on. So this is Florianopolis. Um, and we are in the northern part of the island in a place called Sambaqui, uh, very close to Rio Ratones. And this is very good for us because there is no uh, uh, um, traffic through the big, um, the big, um, uh, the fancy places, you know, for tourism are in, in Jurere, but there is no road connecting our place to the, to the big city, well, to, to the um, um, tourist places because we have the Rio Ratones in between, and there is a, a, a project there, uh, which is a reservation project, which will not allow any connection there. So re really lucky. We are very protected here. So we have this uh, manguezal, which is a mangrove. Um, um, yes. And this is from a drone. This, this was Iwaska up there. Um, and uh, we have... Uh, um, we are in uh, in, uh, <clears throat> in good uh, connection with uh, people owning the these blocks there called Yakumama, and then a friend of ours uh, owns the next property. So that means that we are lucky that we have three properties next to each other, and our plan is to reforest that area. I don't know if you can see here this part, especially the our area here is the is greener. Um, because we have been planting trees now for 22 years. The whole uh, area is about 24 acres or 10 hectares. <coughs> we have big problems. Uh, there is a fern, which is uh, from, the, from North America, and uh, uh, eating that mountain, uh, killing the, uh, the trees. So one of the things that we have to do is uh, take out this fern and plant uh, uh, trees from the Atlantic forest. Okay, very briefly, I was born in the Amazon. I went to the seminar. I left the seminar and went to the to the uh, Universidad Complutense de Madrid. In '71 is when I met Terence, uh, Terence McKenna, and there was a big change in my life, of course. Um, we took Yahé for the first time for him and for me in in our country house, and. Uh, and he was then writing the visible landscape. And I was even helping him to uh, work pontification with the, with the uh, itching and so on. And uh, we did, took Yahé uh, with a brew that we got through a German and a Hungarian. So the globalization of ayahuasca started already in 1971. You know. And uh, um, the Hungarian Kalman Sabo. Uh, he was a, a new Apolinaria Kanomi Hoy, an Indian that I knew all my life, you know, because he used to go to Florencia. Uh, Florencia was, uh, when I was uh, small, there was, there was no running water, no electricity, no cars. It was just, you know, we bought uh, water, for drinking water from donkeys, you know. And in Apolina, I used to go from time to time there, so I knew him from, from my childhood. <clears throat> he was originally from the Segundo Valley and then moved to Yurayaco. At that time, in 1971, it was all forest. We tried, Terence and I, we tried to get to Yurayaco, but it was impossible because it was raining and it was all forest. We needed a guide. So, it's, okay, but in 1979, I went back to that area and we took Yahé. And now, perhaps for the people who do not know, Yahé is different from Ayahuasca because the, the admixture plant is, is different. So. Uh, the Diplopterus cabrerana, called Viaje, or the other names, um, Chiliponga, uh, um, there is also a Malpichiesia, the same family as Panisteriopsis capi, and probably this is the oldest. We have some evidence from the Venezuela, the Orinoco, um, or the use of Viaje, which is probably the older. The ayahuasca is, uh, the initial plant is Cicotrepididis, which is a Rubiaceae, a coffee family. Probably, much later, include, there are some uh, anthropologists uh, at the bottom is claiming that perhaps the use of ayahuasca as we know it now is perhaps only 250, 300 years, including the Shipibo. Everybody thinks that they have, you know, they have used for thousands of years. It's not, it's not the case. So here you have the map of the distribution of Yahé and ayahuasca. 
Okay, now the dreams of gardens. Uh, I mentioned the Dennis uh, Terence because we already were thinking in 1971, and, and then in our correspondence, correspondence, we corresponded for many years, and we have I have something like over 100 uh, letters from Terence, and um, and so here from 1973, we'll go with the idea of immediately going to Florencia and trying to determine what land options were open to us. We would intend to buy some piece of land and begin immediately to move plants and establish a living situation. 75, naturally, I hope that she will decide, it was a story with uh, his uh, uh, girlfriend, to sell her share to me. There is nothing for her in Caquetá now, while Eduardo and Luis Eduardo and I still plan to develop the land into a botanical garden as we have planned. The, later that year, I only see that um, I'm still planning to live and work at Villa Gloria, where we took your head sometime in the future. And we'll write a grant proposal this summer trying to drum up some money for a botanical farm on the land there. However, through mutual friends, I hear that things are getting very bad in Colombia, both on the general political scene and also with regard to foreign travelers, especially Americans. And then in 76, yesterday we arrived in Lima. And tomorrow we will fly to Iquitos. The decision to come directly to Lima and thus bypass Colombia was not made without considerable soul searching. But recent travelers in Colombia indicated that the state of emergency, which continues from last July, has made it impossible, a possible dangerous place for young Americans in pursuit of local drugs, even Yahe. And finally, um, in 77, I still think about the land and have even recently debated about going to Colombia instead of to Hawaii to see the land for myself and to determine if now might be the time to build something there. Please tell me, is your father still living in Florencia? Is Villa Gloria and San Antonio in Florencia much as it was when we were there? Or is it all changed somehow? These questions are important to me and could even determine the future course of my plans. And so I'm very interested in hearing your opinions. I would still prefer to live on that land than anywhere else in the world. So unfortunately, because the political situation, it was not possible to do anything in Colombia. So he decided to go to Hawaii, bought a piece of land and created botanical dimensions to which I contributed. So this is from my second um, it's the second time I took Yahe, this time with Apollinar. And uh, uh, he died, I plan to make a film. He died, and I went to see Terence again in California, and he told me, go to Iquitos. He had been to Iquitos, and he had heard, only heard about the ayahuasca tradition there. So I went, uh, he gave me uh, three names. One of them was Emilio Adrade Gomez. I went there, I met Don Emilio, made a film about him, uh, and it was the beginning of my, my uh, research on the plant teachers and on the vegetalistas. It's typical that when anthropologists go to Iquitos, not now, I don't know how is the situation now, but at the time, when everybody went to Iquitos and they went to the, to, the, to the tribes. I stayed there because only just 13 kilometers from, from Iquitos, there was Don Emilio, and he was saying things that I've never heard. You know, for instance, the concept of plant stitches. He said, ayahuasca, he said, doctor, yaje, eh, tobacco, he said, doctor, oje, you know, eh, oje, brumancia, he said, doctor, and et cetera. You know? So, so, and so I, I made a film and then every summer I went back again and again to Iquitos to continue uh, my, my, my work. And Don Emilio introduced me to other ayahuasqueros and I did the diet because they said that if you want to learn about these things, you have to keep a certain a special diet, you have to be in isolation. And so I, I did it. I just, no, because I wanted to see what, 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 what are they talking about? You know, simply that I, I would not think I'm going to be a shaman or I'm going to be initiated or anything like that. Simply, I want to experimentally, you know, <laughs> to, 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 to have my own experience you know, about what they are talking about. Uh, in, I met there at Dennis in 1983 and we started a collaboration. This is in the marketing Florencia, my town. And together we, uh, okay, I organized in 85 the first. Uh, International uh, Symposium on Ayahuasca, on, on Banisteropsis Capi and its additives, in fact. Uh, Guillermo Revalo, she people, someone was, uh, we became very famous later on. And um, then we started to collaborate with Terence and collecting plants in the area and taking them to uh, Hawaii. So this is Pablo Maringo and uh, with Dennis, and this is in Hawaii. 
uh, where uh, uh, Terence and Kat Harrison uh, had the botanical dementia. The botanical dementia still is, a, is, is still there, uh, uh, run by Kat Harrison, although Kat told me that the wild pigs have destroyed a lot of the garden, you know, so, so yeah. And then it's introduced me to Pablo Maringo, uh, who um, had a fantastic memory. You know, I, when I saw the landscape he made, uh, I, I was astonished. You know, he, he has this eidetic memory. And I asked him whether he remembered his visions. He's, he made this vision for me and then gave another one to Dennis. And then we, we, we began a collaboration um, that, started, that lasted several years. And finally, I, I, will, I have gone through this already, so I will not repeat. You know, this is the mother of plants, the spirit of plants, and so on. And, and we published um, uh, in 1991, uh, Ayahuasca Visions, which was quite a, quite a, 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 a many anthropologists were astonished. And, and even people in, in Iquitos, when they saw this, they said, yeah, this is Ayahuasca. Nobody has ever done this, you know? People recognize, even the indigenous people, they recognize, yeah, this is Ayahuasca. They could see that it was coming from that place, whatever place it is. But the, what I wanted to tell you here is about the Usco Ayar Amazonian School of Painting. Uh, Pablo had, um, uh, uh, there was one boy, Dennis Rengifo, who was uh, uh, started to do paintings and he was taking cardboard. And, and, and then I told Pablo, no, no, please give him good materials. I was buying for Pablo the best materials I could get. And so another kid arrived, and then another kid, and there was suddenly there were five kids there. They wanted to learn, and I, I told Pablo, "Let's create a school." And so, so we created the, the school of painting, Usco uh, Ayer, which uh, grew. Uh, at the end, uh, we had three hundred students. Uh, tuition was free, and the most important for me is that the methodology that Pablo was using. Uh, the kids will never copy from plants or, you know, they will go to the forest, look at, uh, at the plants, memorize them or, or I mean, understand the plants very well, you know, and, and then they will project the, 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 what they have in their hand, in their heads on paper, because that is the way Pablo worked. He never, if you see his paintings, there is never a correction. He is able to, you know, project on the white uh, on the paper, and he said, "I just put in the colors." He has this kind of memory. He was teaching the students, and I wonder whether the Amazonians, because all these kids that were doing this with the Amazonian, have really this capacity. I just wonder if there is any study uh, of eidetic memory among Amazonian people. And I can imagine when you have to go through the forest. In a, you know, with eighty thousand different species, and you have, you know, you have to memorize somehow, and they are able. In fact, in, 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 the, in terms of, of sensorial, uh, I mean, these people are more, much more advanced than us. I mean, I've been in situations where some an Indian said, "There's a boat coming," and I don't hear anything at all. In 10, 15 minutes, I can hear it's coming. You know, so I mean, it's extraordinary. Anyway, so so. These are some of the, the students, kids. I made exhibitions in all over in various European countries, in the States, in Japan, and uh, until 1994 that I gave up. It was too much for me. Uh, but anyway, 300 students, everything free, and it's all, all about nature. You know? So it was uh, an ecological practice. Here are some examples of the best students. I mean, remarkable, really. So excursions to the forest, and then we created the ethnobotanical garden. Um, um, pity, you know, it didn't last long because at that time it was uh, the shiny path, Sendero Luminoso, uh, and they, they, they came to the garden and, and demanded money, you know, we have to keep money. They thought that the school was famous and, you know, <laughs> we didn't have the money and the money went for, for the school. So we abandoned the garden. And, um, and then a new garden was created near Iquitos, which is still is there. The Sachamama Edom Botanical Garden. If you go to Iquitos in the U.S., you will get to Francisco Montes, who is the director, a cousin of Pablo. Of Pablo. Uh, uh, we, we, we got money for 14 kids from Pucallpa to Iquitos. The idea was to help open the garden, and each of them they will create a portrait of a plant. So these are two examples of Bromelia and and Psicotria Pepigiana from the garden. And the last exhibition in which I was involved was in the Capital Children Museum in Washington. 
And okay, so this is Francisco Montes who created also a, a little a, a, a place for the taking ayahuasca and. And this is one of his paintings from Francisco Montes, did also paintings, but all with natural uh, products. Um, just uh, about three years ago, I was invited to a, a, an exhibition in, in, in Florida. And uh, the school, although I left the school and it, it collapsed because I was the one who was doing the things, and, but I came back again and again and so on. But now there are some of the kids of this school are famous painters. You know, I, I get messages from Holland, from I don't know where, you know, Japan, etc. Many of these kids um, um, continue working. And this is this is one of a, a, a book published by Scott Old Olsen. Um, okay, now this is Dale's personal history. I wish that he was online. Uh, but I will just tell you, you know, this the other side of the story, you know. So the, uh, a little bit of Dale, who uh, grew um, uh, in in South Africa and uh, uh, worked in several national parks. He was a herpetologist as well. Um, uh, in the, he worked in the Kruger National Park, and then um, there was this uh, place, Rustler Valley near Lesotho. I think that I hear the, the photograph. And uh, uh, we met there. Uh, it was Terence who told me, uh, I met him here in, in London, uh, told me that he was invited to South Africa. I told him, uh, Terence, if he is interested, send me a message, he sent me a contact. And I was invited to, to Russell's Valley, a, a place where it was kind of hippie-like, you know, they organized uh, music festivals, but very interesting. Uh, um, this is uh, the founder, um, I don't remember his name. And, uh, and there, when I arrived, Bill Mollis was there, who is the father of permaculture. Uh, so, so I did, uh, and then I, there I met uh, uh, Dale. Yeah, this is 20 years ago, 22 years ago. Um, so, and uh, he took me to the, to the Sacred Valley, to the, to the Sangoma Valley. This is my, my, uh, my wife. Uh, and Monica, who was an extraordinary healer, very famous at Sulu healer, also knowing a lot about uh, plants. And uh, uh, usually you don't hear you know, any plants, uh, psychoactive plants in South Africa, but apparently there are dozens of them. Only they have not been studied because of apartheid and all that. But now there are uh, botanists uh, working on that. So this is Monica, and I will go because I don't know much about. Uh, so this is daily if you have to talk. Yes. All right. And uh, there was a fire in Russell's Valley. Uh, they lost everything, absolutely. And all the people living there lost everything. And then he went to Indonesia. And, and then uh, uh, later on, uh, he came to, to Wasiwaska. And what, just a little story, you know, was, it was a crazy idea, you know, the, to make a place, you know, for, for having seminars with very little money and so on. So it took me a long time, you know, uh, just to build something. But, you know, 22 years is a long time. So gradually I created the, the place and with a fantastic advisory board. Uh, that was my idea to create a place where I could invite my friends and organize seminars. Usually we have uh, uh, two, three, or four even uh, guest speakers. We have lectures every day and so on. So this is uh, Wasiwaska, uh, the dining room. Uh, we, 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 uh, we can have at most, most uh, 14, 16 people um, there. And OK, so that's photos of the, of the place, of the house. And then we have separate uh, two small buildings where we can have uh, a guess, and um, and now we are opening a, a new program where, uh, for students that they, they can go there and and have a fast internet connection, a perfect place to to write the thesis or so on. So this is our place. Okay. All right. Beautiful sun uh, sunset. Uh, okay. So now about the garden. You know, so uh, of course, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 of course. Um, the first plants that arrived in our place were, they were Baricelops capi and Cicotrevidi, the, um, you know, the, the ayahuasca components. And the, the good, beautiful thing about having a garden is that you can see the whole process, you know, from, from seeds to, to, to mature plants. Um, in fact, in the beginning, I was, we were wondering, it would be better to from cuttings on from seeds. We, uh, it was, it's better for, for, from seeds because you have the genetic diversity. 
Now, the problem with ayahuasca, it is extremely invasive. It will, you know, it will go over all the other plants. So we have four or five plants in the center of the garden, and it was impossible. We could not have anything else. So we have to take them and just put the, the ayahuasca in a specific place. In, in, the, in the wild, ayahuasca is a huge find. Uh, I was with uh, some uh, people from the Barquinha, one of the churches that I studied, one of the uh, uh, religious organizations that take ayahuasca uh, as a sacrament. And I once uh, went with the Barquinha uh, to the forest and collected one single plant, 600 kilos, one single plant. And they didn't, they, they didn't take the, I mean, the harvest, they, 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 you don't take the whole thing. You know? So, so, and in fact, it could be the ayahuasca must be one of the largest plants in the world, you know, because it can be 40, 50 meters going to the canopy, going, you know, so. And um, so uh, one of the things that they propose is that try to grow Baniceropsis together with a fast growing tree. And so uh, there's this tree, Garapuvu, uh, which in, in, in Guarani language means a canoe emerging from the ground, uh, um, which is very, very fast growing tree. This tree that you hear that we have to cut because it's too close to the to the house and, and it's not very, uh, it, it may fall. Um, and this is probably only six or seven years old. So extremely fast growing tree. And then we made the experiment and put in the ayahuasca vine and it, we did the three, three trials. And, and one of them, uh, succeeded tremendously. So here you have the carapuvu uh, and the ayahuasca, the Baniceros vine growing. And the thing is that it will not never kill, it could easily kill the carapuvu because it could cover it completely. But still, you know, they establish some kind of relationship and so they continue growing. And, and this is a fantastic agroforestry um, project because both the vine and the garapuvu, they produce a lot of biomass. So in fact, you are creating islands of, you know, you can put many of these, you know, and with a good distance from each other, and they will be regenerating the soil. And then we can put fruit trees or other trees in between. So I have been thinking, you know, that this will be a, a way to really um, uh, recover areas in the Amazon, which are completely destroyed because of the cattle. The, the Panisterosia doesn't mind uh, clay, and the same with the Carapuhu, you know, they, they grow anyway. So, so this, is, this is a project. I, I'm just saying this, and I hope I'm going to say it many times to see if, the, if indigenous people will pick it up, because nobody can patent this, you know, it, it is a fact. And, and perhaps it will be mean income. But in Stereopsis by itself, without the DMT containing plant, whether it be Plopterus or Psychotrophididis, extremely medicinal. Um, and, uh, and you can make a syrup, you know, take it every day. We do it, my wife, we all do it in our garden daily. We take it every day. And uh, uh, it seems very good. Apparently, it, it um, enhances, um, uh, it's a, a stem progenitor. So, so that whatever you have, you know, somehow it will, Besides that, it is um, it is also neurogenic. You know, uh, uh, Ribas um, has done studies showing that both harmine and harmaline are uh, neurogenic. Uh, um, oh, here you have the the, two, the garapuvu and the vine and all this biomass um, coming from the Banisteropsis. Now there are two varieties, uh, two varieties that we know more or less. You know the. The, the, the one is smooth to Kanaka and the other one with nodules. Uh, they, they call it Kaupuri, the UDB and other organizations, they call it uh, Kaupuri. Uh, but in fact, this is just the tip of the iceberg because the indigenous people recognize many, many different ones. Botanists, they will say that this is the same species. Uh, 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 and, you know, the Indians, they have many different names. So, so, so in every tribe, they have the names and sometimes the species, the, the, the name depends not only of, of the, of the morphology, but it's where it is growing and where it is harvested and all this so much more sophisticated taxonomy that, that we have in the West. In fact, that is one of the things we have been talking with, with uh, uh, Christine about how we are reducing, you know, the Indians will recognize the, 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 the different kinds, not only because of the phonology of the plant, but also the environment, the other plants growing around it, what kind of insect, what kind of birds, you know, it's a whole 
totality. And so the Western science take just the vine, you know, it is this vine, they give it a name, and then you extract, you know, some chemicals, and uh, 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 you, de you decide which is the active chemicals, in, in the case of Bonesteropiscopy, harmine, harmanine, et cetera, hydrohamine. But in fact, you know, uh, it contains something like 24, 26 different components. You know, so this idea of extracting one chemical is like what has happened with cocaine. You know, you take coca, which is extraordinary plant. You know, the, in so many different ways you extract one alkaloid. So this is the great mistake. And then you take the you take the uh, active ingredient. You you make a, a, a you give it a, a therapeutically when there is another screening of people. You know, and and so so it's reductionist. You know. In giving, of course, fuel to the pharmaceutical companies, to the, the you know the, the medical <laughs> industry, and so on. Okay, but the Calpuri, uh, uh, I was reading again the, the Spruce, who was the first one who made the description of Banisteropsis, and he said wooden twiner stem thumb swollen uh, joints. I, I don't think that anybody had. Did notice this, the swollen. So he was really talking about this plant. So he was talking about the, 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 the called Calpuri, which is probably another species for the following reason. The flowers are a little different, you know, and, and, and to the left you have Banisteros capi and the other one, and Tukunaka and the Calpuri. The flowers are darker, pink. The glands are also different. Um, the 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 capuri glands are bigger, and um, and so uh, so it is quite and, and well the, and the effects are also different. I have taken both with uh, with uh, uh, tukunaka and capuri, and uh, capuri is much uh, has higher uh, alkaloid content, which is very good because. And the, okay, no, I got the next slide. And with Dale, uh, Dale has been doing uh, experiments, um, and we have now hybrids. Uh, this is a hybrid of Tukunaka and Kaupuri. Tukunaka is, is better for the stomach. Kaupuri is uh, stronger, but contains higher um, uh, harming contains. So we hope that this uh, hybrid will produce something in between, uh, not so heavy in the stomach, but high in alkaloid content. So, and but in our forest, there are a lot of Malpighia, which are not studied. So there is another thing that we hope that uh, uh, the botanists will work with us and identified and may perhaps you know um, 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 study the the, the 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 chemistry of of many of these RPGSs in okay I, I in a book wrote, uh, uh, in a book called mind of plants I was asked to write something about ayahuasca and I just took a little uh, a paragraph from there so that you can get a little closer to the plant so her own body is a metaphor she's a river a serpent an umbilical cord. She may be a gigant moving in her own temple through the forest, extending her many arms, looking for support, making alliances, finally getting to the canopy to satiate her thirst from the rays of the sun father. Up there, when the time is ripe, she generates bouquets of delicate pink and white flowers. Um, okay, so... Uh, Exhaling a scent that attracts millions of bee persons who take her pollen to other vines like her. At the base of her leaves, always in pairs, small yellow glands nourish multitude, multitudes of ant persons. Her seeds, attached to a wing and carried by the wind, are propelled and dispersed through the forest, looking for a place to grow. When this happens, two tiny snakes emerge almost simultaneously. One, the beginning of a new vine, the other, the first fruit, which as it did what it divides again and again, travels long distances, establishing relationships with other plants, exchanging nutrients through extensive networks of fungal beings in trillions of microorganisms. Okay, so this is Cicotre, the other, the other plant um, from the coffee family. We have about nowadays, we started with something like 13 plants, now we have probably 40 or 50 plants. And uh, some people have said that it's difficult to, 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 to propagate, not at all. Uh, just the leaves, let me see, okay. Uh, if you have the leaf of cicotter, you put it in, 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 in good soil from these lancets, this, this, uh, from these little structures there, the, uh, new plants will grow. 
and the seeds you know, are also very viable. So it's, it's, it's not at all difficult to, to cultivate uh, Cicotria. And then we have found in the forest nearby other Cicotrias, like Cicotria cartaginensis, which is also contains uh, the method triptomine has been used, and others which we don't know, Capensis, uh, I don't know. And then we have the other one, Diplopterus cabrerana, growing very well from two sticks that Dennis uh, took to, to Basibasca. Now we have many plants. And, and, and this, is a, 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 this vine almost likes to be harvested, you know, because you take a lot of leaves and in a short time, it's again, you know, full of, of leaves. And then some of the admixture plants like Caliandra and Gustifolia that apparently contain a, a, a tetrahydroharmine is used especially by the Shoar, uh, where they call it Natem, uh, and, and so on. And then we have, of course, Brumansias. We have now several, uh, so we all have different colors. And uh, uh, just to remind you, uh, the persecution, you know, a Brumansia uh, used for divination with diabolic intent. Uh, uh, this is uh, from uh, 1661. It is called borrachera, floripondio, or campana, given that the flower looks like one. They use them to cure persistent illness. Either they get healthy or die with it. It is also used to become maestros and learn the art of witchcraft. So the idea of plant teacher that I found in, in Peru, it is already there. So this is a, you know, with this, uh, they are able to, to learn. And the, the place where they are the, uh, the more, more the diversity in terms of, uh, you know, the diversity is in, in the Segundoy Valley in, Colo in Colombia. In this valley, they, they cultivate many different kinds of, of Brumansia. So really, it is the paradise. And we were lucky. Ah, OK, we have Brumansia so well as several colors. We are, have also Datura inoxia. They contain the same alkaloids. Uh, Brumansia was called earlier Datura arborea, you know, but, uh, but now it's divided. Uh, it is very easy to see the difference because the Brumansia had the flowers going down, the Brumansia, the Datura up, and the, the, uh, the seeds of, of the of the soil volumes are smooth, while the, the inoxia has like uh, uh, spikes or... Uh. But now uh, we got uh, about two years, two and a half years ago, very lucky, we got the queen of the Brugmansias. This is Brugmansia aurea. And uh, okay, this is uh, Salvador Chindoy in the... I'm sorry, uh, should, the slide should be later. And um, uh, Salvador Chindoy was... Uh, a famous uh, a Kamsa shaman visited by many Schultes was one of the person who was there and he had this photograph of different botanists who had been there they may, uh, taking photos uh, of him uh, so I was one and his son was um, Miguel Chindoy he was uh, uh, um, having a mestizo um, apprentice and who told me that the garden around the the, the, the garden around the, the shamans, it was called El Jardín de la Ciencia, the science garden. Again, the same idea of, of plant teachers. So here, this is the uh, Don Pedro Guajibioy, photographed by Schultes, I don't know, probably in the 50s or so on. Uh, the the is, is my photograph of him in 85. Uh, yeah, he already passed. Uh, uh, anyway, so, but this is our Brugmansia aurea. It is absolutely magnificent plant. It, it is considered in the Sibundoy Valley like the most important of all the Brugmansia. They call it borracheros. They call it um, uh, um, culebra borrachero, the, uh, the snake uh, Brugmansia. And uh, it produces flowers nearly all the time. I mean, in one year, we had seven times flowers. And they last for a long time, and they have a strong, extraordinary scent. And when it, 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 when it's in flower, you go to the garden at night because it's only at night. So it's, the fragrance is extraordinary. It's, it, it is uh, by itself just the smell is intoxicating. Beautiful, beautiful, uh, uh, and different from the normal Brugmansias. The normal Brugmansias they have like uh, oval um, shape uh, leaves. The aurea is not very long leaves, and uh, Schultes was. In the description, we say that those leaves can be up to 25 centimeters. We have had uh, 50, uh, all the way to 50 centimeters long leaves, and completely irregular. So this is a plant that you don't you, you don't have two leaves 
exactly the same. It's like like a like a key, you know, that you have the different and the flowers they are all different, different shapes. They, you know, so it's it's really beautiful. Here you have the normal Brugmansia to the left and the and the Brugmansia aurea to the right. And very interesting, there are some uh, uh, spiders that live there. And in this kind of uh, spiders, they change color according to the flower they are in. So they, you know, so, uh, and, and one thing that we observe, the bees, when they go to this uh, Solanacea, to, to this Brugmansia, they, uh, apparently they get uh, the effects, you know, they get some kind of, you know, and the spider <laughs> have the opportunity to pick them up. We have, of course, the, the tobacco, both the tobacco, the nicotiana tobacco and nicotiana rustica. And, and Dale has made tobacco from that, quite good. We have several, uh, Ribea corimbosa, the Oluluquia of the Aztecs, a very famous plant. And um, we have something like uh, a wall with 30 meters when the whole thing is in flower, it's expect spectacular. And uh, with a lot of bees, and I was speculating, perhaps it's possible to make, a, 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 you know, a, a, Psychotropic uh, uh, honey, you know, could be, you know, so it's a possibility. And we have other uh, Convolvulacea. This is from India, uh, Idea nervosa, very similar flowers. And of course, we have morning glories of various types, you know. And and so and we have Cava Cava from the Polynesia, uh, um, which is, uh, yeah, you all use uh, as a as a kind of stimulant, but also necessary for the, the, the meetings. You know, this, yeah, you have, like you have here, you have coffee, you have cava, you have cava, and beautiful, beautiful leaves. And then we have, of course, uh, uh, was peyote. And uh, they, uh, Dale has been doing experiments. As you know, peyote is very slow, grows very slowly. <laughs> but um, he has doing an experiment um, grafting it on top of, uh, of um, San Pedro cactus. And it grows very fast. And so we can have flowers and then seeds. So, so this, you will, as you probably know, there, there, is a, uh, the, um, there is a problem with the Native American church and people, you know, uh, uh, there is a danger that the peyote will go extinct in nature. So this is a way to cultivate peyote very fast, very quickly. You know? And San Pedro, as you know, San Pedro is, 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 is the, the use of San Pedro is very old. This is from the from the, um, the Chavin culture, and uh, uh, peyote also very uh, at least five thousand years old at least uh, the use of peyote. And uh, relatively recently, uh, two or three years ago, there was uh, found um, uh, uh, San Pedro cactus in what seems to be in some kind of ritual place, you know, so in, in a, some sort of temple. So, so probably the use of, of San Pedro is at least 4,000 years old. We have both, uh, and then we have an Adelantera peregrina and an Adelantera columbrina, uh, Yopo and Seville. Uh, an Adelantera columbrina is used uh, uh, in, in the north. Uh, this is Manuel Torres, the great specialist in an Adelantera wrote, this is the Bible of Anayanatha, if you're interested. And, and he, this is his, uh, uh, the, the um, distribution of Anayanatha Peregrina uh, is in the northern part of South America and all the way to the Caribbean, uh, taken by the Carib uh, Caribes in, into, uh, into, the, uh, into the islands and in the south, Calu Calubrina. So um, Man Manuel Torres and some, I don't remember now their names, uh, Chilean ar archeologists have been working in San Pedro de Atacama, which is here in the south, but it is still under the influence of Tiwanaku. Uh, Tiwanaku is uh, near the, um, in Bolivia, uh, near the Titicaca Lake, and they have these famous uh, statues, the Ponce Stella, with this, which from, for many years, the archaeology was saying some ritual implements, whatever this, but now we know through the, the work of this Chilean uh, 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 Archaeologist and, and Manuel, that working here in the San Pedro de Atacama, which is very, very dry. It's one of the driest places on earth. And you are able to unearth fantastic, you know, bundles which you uh, hydrate and take in the, 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 the clothes one by one and, and in extremely good conditions. And they found that 25% of the burials of men, uh, the male burials, uh, have the whole. Um, the whole uh, 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 snuffed kit, uh, which proves that uh, uh, they were using uh, 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 
I mean, ritually, and it was extremely important. It was the, the sacrament. And Jose, uh, I will mention you, that they found a, a seed uh, in, 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 in La Lindosa. Was it La Lindosa in Colombia? Yeah. So that now they are going to date it. It will be very interesting to know. They found one seed carbonized. So it will be how old it will be, you know, the, this, this seed. But any, anyway, another thing extremely important in South America, you have these uh, snuff kits and, 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 um, uh, and then you find the tab tablets. Uh, they use it for snuffing, putting the 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 the, the, the seeds uh, crushed and, and and they inhale it. And you find also the mochica in many cultures. I mean, this is in fact probably an anatera is the widest the widest distribution of saca plant saca plants in the America in the Americas. Inclu you know, here, this is from the Museo de de Loro, uh, uh, Golden Museum in Bogota. And, and uh, uh, interesting that the first book written in Europe, in, in the Americas, on a European plant um, uh, uh, language was uh, on this plant of co cohoba. And uh, I repeat the, the joke that Dennis made. You know, I said in the last time that Christopher Columbus went to to Hispaniola, saw the the Taíno using both tobacco and cohoba, and he picked up tobacco and took it back to to, uh, to Europe. What a mistake, you know, if he had taken cohoba with uh, the five methoxy uh, DMT, you know, the Western culture would be completely different, you know, so, so. Anyway, something very interesting happened with our anadelanteras there. And um, um, so, uh, we have these uh, this, uh, monkeys, uh, these uh, marmosets, I think, um, coming to our garden, uh, um, we started to feed them bananas. They were very curious. Sometimes they came families. And then some years ago, they started to see them, went to the Anaderancera again and again. And we were worried, you know, because, you know, you see these are our scars. We were worried they are going to kill the, the tree, but not at all. It seems that they are perfectly. And we found out that uh, these uh, marmosets and the Anaderancera are from the same ecosystem, the Cerrado in, 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 in Brazil. So they found it, and you know, it's like going back home, you know, here. And they get something out of it. Uh, so they go morning and evening, they go and, and take the, the, the resin. And, and who knows, you know, if it would be interesting to make an analysis of, of that res, resin, you know, and see if with it, and it would be interesting to see whether they get high, really. I mean, the monkeys, you know, why? No. And, and they don't, they don't, they don't um, kill the trees, and they are going also after other trees that contain dimethyltryptamine, like like we have a Jurema um, a, a Mimosa tenuiflora, also contains DMT, and they also going there, and then we have an acacia. Uh, uh, so it, we were so afraid we put in all these balloons, you know, to take them away, you know, uh, because we thought that they were going to kill the, the, the plant, but they did, they did it. So this is Mimosa tenuiflora, Jurema, from the Northeast. And it also went after Porcelia macrocarpa, is an anonacea, but they found in the literature that apparently also contains a, a tryptomines. Also, they go to those plants. Also, there must be something with these monkeys and the tryptomines. And this is from Dale. Uh, he, uh, when he was going back to South Africa, went uh, to uh, uh, found in a in a botanical garden a huge anadenanthera tree with seeds. You know, I mean, huge. And uh, from planted there, this tree was planted in the 1850 or something like that. So uh, he had never seen. We had never seen seeds that that size. So perhaps it's even another anadenanthera not yet uh, described. Okay. How much time do I have? Because I have too many. Oh, Another five only five minutes. Oh, wow. So okay, so I will go. So you will see plants. You know, I will go see plants. You know, um, you know um, uh, so this is uh, this is uh, um, uh, uh, urucum. Uh, we have many plants of urucum. You, you open them, and the, the seeds come. You, uh, I think that I have a photo. Here you have the seeds, and and and, and that's what the Indians used to, to paint uh, in red. And uh, we just planted a Jenny Papo, uh, which is the, the black one. So these are the two main plants, uh, which are not only for decoration, but also medicinal and for mosquitoes. They are very good for mosquitoes. And then we found, uh, we have also uh, Tabernata catarinensis, 
which contain alkaloids very close to the iboga, you know. So iboga is very difficult, it grows slowly, but this grows very well. So there is here another possibility. That, uh, okay. And we have uh, some of medicinal plants, we have ashwagandha, uh, uh, and then we have uh, also andrographis paniculata, very useful, especially now with the COVID, it's very, very, it is very uh, effective. And, uh, and then turmeric and lots of turmeric and uh, Moringa for cancer, our gardener was and he, he himself, you know, he had a huge tumor in the lung, in one of the lungs and uh, only with plants he, he cured himself. And Petiver Eleasa from the Amazon, a very important plant and several clitoria, very beautiful and which these are very good for the soil because they grow on clay and, and, and they gradually renovate the soil. And Mukuras, uh, 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 Macuna, Macuna, uh, beautiful uh, flowers, and 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 the, the, these are very common in the Amazon. The, the people, the Indians, make uh, necklaces of this, of the Macuna. And then, okay, we have extraordinary um, number of or orchids. If you go to our place in September, October, you know, this is the place for orchids, including vanilla, uh, which is a, an orchid, and many other. Uh, Orchids. And then we have several nepenthes as well. Very good because we have mosquitoes, so we hope to have many of these nepenthes of the garden so the, the, to eat the, the mosquitoes. And then other fantastic, beautiful plants. You know, Aristolochia gigantea is fantastic. This is a, a heliconia that they found in the forest. Very different from the other heliconias, much larger, you know, flowers. And then the, the, the Tibokina, now, right now is the time of the Tibokina mutabilis, uh, the, the flowers begin white and then turn into, into pink. And, and, uh, and, then, and then this is the Seiba pentandra, very important plant in, in all in Mesoamerica, uh, the Aztecs apparently, perhaps also the Maya, have in their plazas uh, this, uh, this tree, the Seiba pentandra is called in Peru, called Lupuna. And extremely important um, because this is a plant that they, that they, they say that the shamans are able to travel. It's the connector, the axis moving, you know, the different um, parts of, of the universe that go underneath. Now, uh, we found out that this, this seba, if we die and we, you know, and nobody goes into that area for many years, it would be a forest of of, of 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 this, you know, because the the seeds are transported by by the wind, and we we have to take them out, you know, because there were too many of them. So, and this is the seiba in the Amazon. In the in, this photo was taken many years ago. They are being gigantic, and you see the the, the watermark, you know, from well, from the from the rainy season. You have two marks there, so huge. And consider very important. And this is a painting by Paolo Maringo, where you have the Seba, you know, the Dulupuna connecting the different worlds. Okay, we have the normal ones, coffee, we have cacao, we have Ilex paragonensis, mate, and we have many different uh, uh, bromelias. This is a paradise of bromelias, all this area. And then we have some fungus coming as well. I'm not an expert, but I hope to learn something from it. And this is an homage to Luis Gerardo Rosa, is my wife's father, who planted many trees. Unfortunately, he died in 2011, but uh, many of the trees in our garden were planted by him. He was a plant lover. We have, of course, fruits, you know, papayas and, and uh, guavas and bananas and, and huge, uh, you know, so, and, the, and, the, and fruits from the from the Atlantic forest, delicious, kambuka, yabuticaba, delicious fruits. And then, and then the, the, the uh, maracuja, uh, the fossil flora, and the uh, ananas. And we're making experiments, mixing, because they, it's very uh, fast, easy to make hybrids of this. So delicious fruits and lui lui. And, and this is, we started an agroforestry project, August 2017. This was, and it is just, we are now in five years, five years, look at the difference. This is more or less the same place, you know. We planted uh, many trees and now we have a forest there. You know? and, and that's what we are going to do gradually, open more, you know, now we got some help, you know, for the first time we, got, we got some donations so we are going to put more labor and into opening areas and planting more trees. 
So, and we have done experiments. We got the osinte, you know, which is the something the the, the, the corn uh, um, what's called the ancestor, apparently, and some other uh, that are for the beauty or because they also uh, help uh, the, the soil. So, okay, just. <clears throat> Talking about soil, uh, uh, we get our soil from a project uh, in, in, in Florianopolis, the, the garbage, uh, they, the, some students are collecting, uh, collecting the, um, from restaurants the organic material and making these piles and making a fantastic soil. So we, we get them from, from there by the, by the truck. So this has completely uh, changed uh, our garden and it's helping the project as well. So. And, and we also get a, a river sand, which is very good to, to mix it with the, with the soil. We, we get it for free because we have a little river that's bringing all this, this uh, sand. So, and in our seminar, you, uh, we always have, at the end of the seminar, everyone has to plant a tree. And this is Bernard Carr, the, the famous cosmologist, <laughs> planting his, his tree. And, we, and some some plants are very good to uh, to renovate the the, 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 the soil. This is a cajun cajun or cayanus cayan, uh, which is also very good. You can plant it anywhere in, in very poor soils and produce uh, all this uh, biomass, and it will be changing the be changing it. And this is my wife also uh, uh, helping a lot in the in the in the in our project. And this is our gardener, Señor Valdomiro. Cure himself of, 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 of cancer, and he is really amazing, amazing person. I mean, he's extraordinary. He's a sand master. And, and our birds, you know, when you plant trees, then you have you have the, the birds coming. And so we have all sorts of birds coming to, to see us. Uh, this is the picapau, the, the woodpecker. Uh, I have a, a picapau coming to my window every morning. And uh, and then uh, the, this uh, uh, what is called uh, fragged birds and in the in the sea many kinds of garzas I don't know what is the name um, and uh, so and the, the uh, since we planted palms and producing fruit the tucano are coming so now we we see tucano very often uh, this is the palm which is planted near the, the house and so so we see tucanos coming too. And this strange bird, the Urutau. This is a bird that you, during the day, you think, what's happened? You know, because it's completely immobile. It doesn't move at all. You can touch it. You know, it's, it's completely like, you know, dead. You know? And at night, it's a nocturnal bird. During the day, it's completely uh, uh, dormant. Mm -hmm. And our snakes, you know, unfortunately, we, we have dogs and we have lost six dogs already in 20 years, too, especially the coral, coral snake and the jararaca, the botrox. Uh, so, but we have good snakes as well. This is a culebra a tigre, which has the, the best eyes in apparently in the, in the snake world of this area. And you see the tower of Wasiwaska in her eye. Yeah, and this other... Uh, uh, harness uh, uh, snakes. Uh, uh, Daly is, is a herpetologist. And we have these lizards, which are very good as well because they kill snakes. You know? So they are always welcome. Beautiful colors, when, especially when they are young. And then we have this is Cachorro do Mato. This is, um, this is a, a fox, which uh, come, you know, from that, we thought that they, they didn't. Uh, we didn't have foxes in, on the island, but now, yes, we have them. They eat crabs. And so, and they are very, very not afraid at all. They can come quite close to, to us. And of course, butterflies, this island is famous for the butterflies. And some of them, the, the, the caterpillar of this extremely poisonous one has to be careful. And then the sea is full of all good things. You know? so, so this is the project. And they wrote this little paragraph, the creation of gardens and forest systems such as these ensures resilience, this, uh, ensure resilience, this, this valuable foods and medicine into the future. In the current geopolitical arena, access to these resources is hardly guaranteed, and it is therefore necessary that those among us can become guardians of this valuable ethnobotanical knowledge and these plants in this garden for future generations. They become more productive 
in biodiversity with time. So, okay. So I think that I, you know, I better stop there because I hope, you know, we don't have time. Maybe you can check what the day has looked and if you have the Dale, how do I check? Um, I have other things which I said, you know, but but it doesn't matter. Ah, this I can say. This I can say. Uh, we have been collaborating with Monica Galliano, who has been doing a famous research um, uh, um, showing how Mimosa, um, Mimosa Pudica, uh, uh, teaching a, a, a Mimosa Pudica that there is no harm, you know, repeating an experiment again and again, the mimosa, if you touch it, or it will, it will close. But then if you repeat a certain um, experiment, do, doing the same fall again and again, after some time, the mimosa will not close. And you will keep the memory from this. You repeat the experiment one month later, still it will not close, you know. So showing that, that, that there is behavior in this memory. And she has done also famous experiments with peas, showing that the same thing that you can do with the Pavlov experiment associating food with the bell, and you can do with plants associating light with the fan. And so, so, so that you can take out the light and put the fan and the plant will still move, you know, because it knows that somehow the fan is associated with food. So, so I think that what happens is that because we live in a different time, you know, the, 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 the plant time is completely different than our time, you know. So we are not able to see those things uh, simply because we are, we are too slow. You know, we, we don't see even more, you know, how the mountains move. You know? so, so, so it is a question of attention. It's a question of, and, of, of time. And so she has been doing now doing a very interesting experiments uh, uh, in, the, in the field of bioacoustics. Plants not only emit sounds, and not only uh, uh, hear sounds, you have to be doing experiments in which you, you have a plant and you have uh, running water, and it will, of course, it will bend there. Just no water, just the sound of running water, and the plant will bend that way so that they can detect it, do it all sorts of things so, so that they, no other signal will come than, than the sound, no chemical signal or whatever. But then also they are able to emit sound, and then you, she's using this kind of tiny um, uh, um, microphones on the, and, and you can hear you know, the plants are emitting sound. So the speculation is that perhaps the forest, you know, whole forest, you have a whole orchestra there. And perhaps this kind of, of, of sound can be used in a, in, 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 in to, to, to enhance uh, uh, the cultivation of plants or, or creating new botanical gardens. It's like, like being in the womb of our mothers, you we hear the heart and all that and so the babies which are premature they put some in hospital they put the sound of the mother they will help the, the baby so perhaps there's something like that is possible so okay so yeah that's uh, I, I didn't come to the philosophical things you know but we don't have the time but i, I already said or perhaps i can say you know that you know the the the, the way of the, the epistemology of many uh, uh, traditional societies is not the separation between subject and object. You know, you have to be very objective, and you know, but it is in some kind of of intersubjectivity, and subject inter, this intersubjectivity means that you take whatever you are observing as alive, as person, as intelligent, and so there is this kind of interrelationship, which is what you find in, in indigenous people in, in general. So, okay. So I think that this is okay. Oh, all right. So this was my last time. Yeah, you go on. Online? Screen sharing. Oh, who's there? Screen share. <laughs> is Dale there? No. No. So probably no electricity. So, mm. so what a pity. Anyway, so any questions or comments? Yeah. Um, uh, thank you. So I loved um, the way you were talking about the plants and the flowers. And I'm really interested to know if you feel you have a relationship with them, you know, so um, whether, you know, from um, the animism perspective or, you know, and is it a two-way relationship or is it just you caring for them? 
Okay, well, it depends. <laughs> okay, that's something that I, that I have been. The, 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 the pandemic was, in a way, for me personally, it was a, a, a blessing because I was able to be in one place for two years without traveling anywhere, just looking at the plants, seeing, taking care of them. And then you start to have a relationship. And I think that animism is not at all a philosophy, it's not a conceptual thing, you know, it's about direct contact. You know, David Abram in this beautiful book, The, the Spell of the Senses, I think they put it very well. Animism is about, it's an experiential thing. It's not philosophy, it's not an idea, it's not conceptual, but it's experiential. And I think that, I think that, I feel that, you know, especially with this Culebra, the Brugmansia Aurea, I have a very special relationship with that plant. You know, I, I of course, you know, she's not talking to me, but I feel, I feel that there is a, this, there's a two, two way. And sometimes dreams and visions as well. You know, it's very interesting that sometimes on the ayahuasca, I see very often, you know, Ana de Ana Adelante, I've seen many times in, in my visions, you know. I recognize that it's this plant. I don't know what the, the, the mean, you know, but that's what they say, they, 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 that that is the way that you learn from the plants. And they very often they say, you learn from the plants, you learn songs. So that is the, you know, that they get songs. And so there will be the two-way relationship, you know. You go there, you keep the diet, very important to be very clean, and then you are sensitive enough to be able to get the songs from the plant. In, in, among the sheep people, songs are, the whole healing is mostly about plants. I was with, with in, in a month in a village, and I was interested to collect plants, you know, to take them to the Chicago, uh, to the Botanical Garden for identification, Tim Plumman did it for me and and um, and then no plants were used and he was healing singing and i asked don don basilio uh, what are the plants he said if you know the song of a plant you don't need the plant. you have to learn the song and that song will do the effect you know, quite quite extraordinary and the whole thing there is about singing 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 and and they believe that we are all covered uh, with some kind of patterns uh, and then and the illness is a kind of distortion of the patterns. And so by singing, you will put the, you restore the patterns and sometimes they get help. For instance, for a hummingbird, the hummingbird will come with the wings, will make a song, and then and they will restore. So it's really it's, it's a completely way of, of it's completely different epistemology. You know, that's well, it's extraordinary. And we have no right to say that primitive people, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's completely misunderstand that they are human beings as intelligent as any, you know. So, so, and there's the thing, you know, the Western culture have never taken seriously. Always this putting these labels and these ideas of evolution and, you know, I mean, it's, it's completely nonsense. And we need this knowledge. We Especially now we need this knowledge. Because I think that one of the things, one of the, one of the, the elements that can take us out from this terrible situation which we are is to go back to some some sort of animism. You know, everything is alive, everything is mind is everywhere. And if you develop this kind of sensitivity, automatically it will be also a, a, for the other human beings, you know. So and, and our relationship will change. And it will so I know that is, you know, perhaps <laughs> just wishful thinking, you know, but I don't know. But I don't know. I when I give talks very often, especially young people react to these ideas. You know, somehow it is there, you know, and I'm not the only one. I mean, there are many people talking about, about this, you know, the CMR, the, the intelligence of trees and so on. So there's a whole new literature coming out and perhaps we will be able to open our eyes. Yeah. First of all, that was fascinating. So thank you for that. You've lived an incredible life. Um, I just wanted to follow up on the plants. You said they, they emit a sound or a frequency. Yes, yes. I want you to speak a little bit more about, I was going to say the evolutionary purpose, and then let's wind that back. What do you think the actual purpose of that well, is? You have to talk to Monica Galliano. Well, just in your words, <laughs> well, well, if you were to think I mean, and educate. I think, I think that it is, again, relationship. You know, I mean, we used to think the tree is this, you know, but no, the tree is also on its own. But the tree is also all this, you know, uh, rhythm, yeah. you know, uh, micro relationships, 
you know, and and so so the plants are connected uh, chemically. Apparently, they exchange nutrients and so on, but they also exchange pheromones, you know, uh, and visible chemicals, you know, which and they also emit sounds, and we don't know what they are doing with that. But perhaps you know, there is much more interaction among the whole thing that we think. We have this tendency to, to take the an organism and put it here, you know. I mean, it is not like that. You know? and, and, and in animism, you have not only the idea that the plant has, you know, the plant has many spirits and it is associated with other spirits, with other, uh, you know, with the birds, with the insects, with this, with other plants. They, they are able to recognize probably by pattern, you know, not uh, a different variety, let's say, of ayahuasca, not because of the shape of the plant, but because of the, what is associated you know, somehow they, they are able to, to, to see it and difficult to explain, you know, because, you know, because these are patterns, you know, that no. So, so I think that it's part of the communication. Could I part of the communication. get a quick follow up? Um, yeah. So I hope this is also just my lack of knowledge in the area, but uh, animism and panpsychism seem quite similar to me. Yeah. Is there a distinction between the two or are they yeah, there are. different shades of the same kind of? We have to add Peter. Peter is there online, you know. <laughs> Perhaps you should answer that question, Peter. Um, well, I, they are interrelated. They overlap as far as I understand. I think we'll talk about this perhaps more in Cornwall tomorrow or the weekend. But um, I wanted to share, related to that question, I wanted to share um, this quotation, if I can do it. Um, let's see here. Can you see this? Yes. So relating to plant intelligence, this was uh, from Gustav Theodor Fechner from the 1850s, I think. He writes this analogy, um, quote, if I remove or destroy all the strings of a piano, a violin, a lute, then there will be no tone to the instrument. So obviously the strings are the essential means for producing tones. They are, so to say, the nerves of these instruments. But now when I hear that the flute, after all, does actually produce tones, in spite of my pretty argument, I cannot see why plants might not be able to produce subjective sensations without having nerves. The animals might be the string instruments of sensation and the plants, the wind instruments. In other words, so that's, I mean, so the, the philosophy has always been there in the West, but it's always suppressed uh, from Spinoza onwards, really. And um, so the, you know, like in, in panpsychism, we sort of, it's not a, it's not a cultural thing. So you have to make arguments for it, but the argument there simply is, that we don't know that nerves, neurons, are necessary and sufficient conditions for sentience. Mm -hmm. And so that opens up the possibility of plant, plant sentience. I'll leave it there. We can discuss more later. Okay. Osiris has a question. Osiris, yeah. Osiris. Dale. Hi, this is Eduardo. Wonderful talk. And it's amazing job. And it's a pleasure to, to hear your, your insightful uh, talk always. I have a question regarding indigenous taxonomy systems. Okay. Would you talk a little bit more about indigenous taxonomy systems, especially regarding to ayahuasca and viaje? Uh, for example, in Mesoamerica, the Nahua people develop a binary taxonomy system mm -hmm. based on language, and sometimes, sometimes um, it will be useful to compare with the Linnean system, you know, to see the, the difference and, of, 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 of course, the coincidence. But it will be great to know more about the Amazonian taxonomy or indigenous taxonomy. Uh, could you uh, yeah. uh, talk a little yeah. bit more about it? Yeah, a pity. I, uh, you know, I, was, I was considering putting a slide from Raisa Dolmatov, uh, the, the shaman in the Jaguar, in which he has a very interesting description. He was with, a, a, I think, Tucano, the son of Barasana, and walking with him in the forest, and, and the, the guy was, uh, the Indian was telling him, okay, this is this kind, I don't remember the, the names, you know, it is this kind of yahe, and this is another kind of yahe. And Raja said, I cannot see the difference at all, you know. Uh, but it, they have a whole taxonomy depending, okay, for the first, they can give different names to the plant, uh, uh, the age of the plant, or even where, where from they take the cutting. So the yahe from the bottom is not the same as yahe from the top. So they will have a different different name for it. Or the yahe that is growing near a river or near a lake, it will not be the same. The yahe which is in, in the in the between, you know, in the I don't remember the Barcia, I think it's called uh, remember, no. So it's, it's different. 
And, and then also uh, they have a different, well, I don't know if names, you know, but differentiate the which is harvest um, uh, in a certain moon, you know, or in certain periods. And we know because of we are growing ayahuasca, you know, so we know that they really the, the alkaloids are changing. Uh, we usually harvest uh, at the ayahuasca just before the flowers are coming. And it's very, very sweet. And I don't know, I mean, I have, we have not made comparison about, you know, how it'll be in other times, you know, but we discovered that apparently there's more sugar going to the flowers. So, so I think that they, they, they see much more than we do. And it was, uh, I think that it was Merlin Sheldrick who was in the, here, who wrote a paper about, about Schultes when he was in the forest. And he, again, he could not see the difference. You know, the Indian was saying, this is this and this is that. He could not, absolutely not see the difference. And, and now it's the way of seeing. I don't know. I mean, I am speculating, you know, that is perhaps pattern recognition. That is not about looking at the plant, you know, like Schultz probably was doing it. All Western, you know, the botanists, you see how the plant, you would see the morphology is the same. But perhaps there is something else, you know, some association with perhaps even colors with other plants, I don't know, and, you know, we cannot. But certainly it's much richer. And, uh, and uh, so I, I think that, you know, our taxonomy is really so, so very primitive compared to the taxonomy. And I remember talking to Raisa Lomatov. He told me that, that very often the Indians differentiate uh, the, the plants by the effect, not by the morphology. So there will be a certain uh, that will give you blue colors, you know, more blue colors or, or other colors, or will uh, enhance perhaps your perception, or auditive perception. Sometimes they call it, you know, they have the, the, the uh, yaguar yaje, you know, because you, you hear the, the sound of the yaje, so on. So it's really, in, in fact, it, this is something that Schultz has already proposed that in, in the 50s, and nobody has been able to solve that problem, you know, so, yeah. Okay. Luis, in, yes. in your okay. question, is, is there any kind of uh, in, inter, human interference with, uh, with ayahuasca, any kind of manipulation, planting, tending, pruning, bringing bring it to the home gardens to that are usually the Amazonian people laboratories to, to experiment with different varieties in, in your experience? If, if, but again, sorry, the, the very beginning of the question is, if is, is there a human manipulation of the plant or just grows wild in the forest and, and people? No, in most, in most cases, uh, it is planted. You know, you know very often they, 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 they plant the, the Sometimes they find a, a good abuelo or a grandfather in the forest, you know. But but usually, and, and we know this because, for instance, we find, but instead of Sikapi in the Chocó, in the in Colombian Chocó, it's impossible. The plant will never be able to cross the Andes, you know. Uh, so so we find it there, domesticated. Probably who knows how old. So probably probably humans been you know, manipulating, uh, you know, this plant for a long time. And in fact, Diplopterus cabrerana, for instance, we have had the Diplopterus already for about 12 years, has not produced any flowers, you know, I don't know whether this is just by cuttings or how it has been reproduced, you know, we don't know, like what happened with Salve divinorum, you know, that, that apparently is one collector, or perhaps two, you know, and all the Salve divinorum you find is from this person, you know, so... Probably there's some, some type of agroforestry. They never they never plant it in home gardens. None of these uh, psycho psychotropic plants that you have been talking about. Yes, yes. It's like planting in the forest that is right. very interesting. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I mean, in my experience, all the people I have been working, they have been growing it near, nearby. But I haven't, you know, you have to ask Glenn Shepard or somebody, uh, these anthropologists who have been there living with the Indians for a long time, that they will know. I mean, my yeah. Okay, excuse me. Thanks for a fascinating talk. Um, I'm wondering if you could comment a little more on the feminine uh, essence of the ayahuasca. Why feminine, yeah. the feminine essence? <laughs> yeah. And why has the name yeah, Mother Ayahuasca? Yeah, yeah, Mother Ayahuasca. But I was talking to uh, Stephen, Stephen um, Hugh Jones, who was the, the head of the, the uh, anthropology department in Oxford many years. 
And we are laughing, you know, because in Peru and Bolivia, everybody is mother ayahuasca. But in the Ticano, it's father, father yaje. So it's masculine, you know. The whole thing is masculine. So, so it's, you know, yeah. Nothing else? So? I'm still interested in the animism and panpsychism question. But it seems Peter wasn't ready to engage in a yeah. <laughs> We have been thinking of working together and see if we can really make it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, Johanna. Uh, yeah, I'd just like to ask like a general question about the future of Azabasca. Like, how do you see this developing in like 10 years or so? You know, yeah, about well, the yes. Years, I guess, yeah, well, I told you, we've been 22 years working alone, you know without any help except, you know, for our seminars, you know, a few seminars per year. But now, after this conference, ESPD 55, suddenly came uh, two ladies, who, you know, we are going to donate $20,000 for the garden and said, wow, that's a big difference because then we can, you know, we can do a lot of things, you know, especially taking out this fern, plant more trees, buy more trees and so on. So the idea is to reforestate the mountain, you know, as much as possible the mountain with um, uh, indigenous, uh, with uh, uh, endemic uh, trees from the Atlantic coastal forest. We will expand the, the botanical garden onto the river, you know, there's a river there, so that so that it will not any of our plants from from outside come in, inside the, 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 the other uh, forest, which is to be with native trees. And my, our idea is to create a, a really an educational institution. We have the possibility because now the three properties, all of them, they will allow us to have people there. And, and, and so perhaps even with the university credits and so on, courses in ethnobotany, perhaps mixed courses with, you know, why not philosophy, psychedelics, you know, ethnobotany, agro, um, um, uh, what's it called, uh, uh, permaculture, there are many in art and many things, you know. So the dream is that we will have a, a play, you know, an educational institution that when I go from this world, I will leave behind an institution in the forest. That's the idea. Yes. Uh, you were saying that the same plant, uh, well, if it grows at different places, if it's by the river or yeah. Um, the forest is considered a different plant. Hey. Do you see that as um, different cultures of the plants, and how do you think that interacts with their properties? So you were saying it's if it's mother ayahuasca or father. Do you think that is a different process? Do they interact differently with humans as well? You know, I mean, the tucano for the tucano, it's a masculine. You know, so so I don't know. I don't I don't know whether they are putting them these questions. You know, with why it is not feminine, but it's masculine. So the tobacco, they say that there are three plants, tobacco, yaje, and coca. There are three most important plants. Gives from the, the, uh, the, 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 the um, world underneath uh, this, this earth, you know. It's a whole mythology, the sun coming and the, and the snake canoe coming up uh, to the Tucano, the Tucano were inside, they, they hit the rock and they came out, but anyway, there were these three gifts, you know. So that is in that mythology, it's masculine, I don't know why. But do you think it, the culture changes the properties of the plant? The culture? Changes how the plant, the properties of the plant, what they do to, when they're consumed. I mean, subjectively, oh, absolutely. You know, we have been discussing with Andy Lecce, uh, today we have lunch together. I mean, for instance, among the, tuc the, the Tucano, the, the Siona, the Siona of uh, Colombia, Ecuador, um, they usually have three ceremonies and they have certain, they have a facial painting for each ceremony because it is agreed that, two, you know, the first night we are going to this place, you know, the second or third river and the second heaven in the third river. And there are these beings, they have these songs and they have these patterns. So it's all very, very, uh, already the culture modulates the experience so they go all together to these places but of course in our case each of us we have different cosmologies impossible you know so we cannot agree we cannot go to the same places because our conceptual world you know is so vast and so diverse you know that it's impossible to you know but certainly culture yeah 
Yeah, and in Peru, they talk about Madre Ayahuasca, blah, blah, okay? But Don Emilio would say Abuelito, you know, it was masculine, you know, grandfather. So I don't know. I think that, of course, certainly culture will will change, you know, modulates in experience. And, and when there's a whole thing about what is, you know, it is inside, it's outside, what is the relationship and all that. Yeah. Sorry, Christine. So when we look at when we, what I've picked up about indigenous uses of psychedelic plants or brews, or I wonder that there is the language of medicine and healing. There is the language of teaching, which could be more than healing, is something right, else. Right. And then, of course, there seems to be this community element of a group of people going somewhere together or going at the same time, or just some person sending some other people off to wherever, but there is a way in which it seems to have these multiple functions in one. Yeah. Do you have a sense that one of these functions is primary? So is this a ritual, like we could have any kind of ritual, that because if, it, if it's practiced ritually, mm. within a group of people who regularly do it together, they will grow closer, regardless of what it is. Yeah, right, right. You know? Or is the epistemology relevant? Or is the medical side relevant? Well, I mean, I'm not saying we need to tear this apart as we yeah, would yeah. have as a philosopher. One always does that. But is there a priority, priority function? Maybe? Okay, I asked Don Apolinar, why do you, Don Apolinar, why do you take Yahé? He said, to see all those animals out there. You know, which is very interesting. You know, the reason why uh, uh, Enrique Strassman and we put the name inner past to outer space. It was this, you know, somehow, you know, that he's able in his visions to see what is out there, you know. And I don't know how it work, you know. Uh, I have some ideas, but it will be too long. Okay, that's Don Apolina. When I asked Don Emilio, why do you take ayahuasca? He said, to strengthen your body and to clarify your mind. Nothing about visions. That is a Western thing. You know, the visions, you know, we are, you know, it's very important, you know, the vision. No, it is to make your body strong and to have your body, mind clear, especially for communication. You know? So completely different than our point of view, you know. I think that there is also an element of, uh, of memory. I mean, these non-literal societies of, of uh, transmitting tradition and, right. and, yeah. and so forth that is very embedded. I mean, maybe become a, I'm an archaeologist, I'm mean, looking at the paintings possibly induced by all these visions that you see people dancing and having all these rituals that are cyclical. You can see a lot of convention, a lot of formality, but it's because uh, in these non-literal societies, it's, it's also a memory plays a, a big part. Yeah. And the transmission of culture from generation to generation to the new initiates, I think is also another important I think it's very important, the, the, uh, you know, to invite, you know, Jose Iriarte aquí, because, you know, to present your work and, and all this visionary art, you know, I mean, it seems to be visionary, you know, uh, extremely important. I mean, it gives another perspective to all, to all this, you know. And, of course, it just it shows that there are plant motifs, but what plants are they? You know, it's more, more complicated, perhaps, than another but, you know, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. But certainly, you just talk about memory. They say that, you know, that ayahuasca will uh, enhance your memory because these are oral traditions. Very important to know all this, you know, to memorize huge amounts of stories, you know. And they say that they, they will help with that. And they say also they help with language, languages. And, and Amazonians are extremely gifted with languages you find because very often you have the man has to go fetch his wife somewhere or the other way around the man has to work for the father of his bride and you know so and 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 and, and then uh, uh, you have to find it somewhere else you know? so you bring to the community uh, all these languages because in the in the amazon there are something like 25 linguistic families you know Linguistic family, so we, you know, so it's just like in, it's one of the richest. I think it's the second richest linguistically place on earth, you know, after Guinea, you know. So, so yeah, and they say that, you know, I don't know, I don't know. Let's uh, they say many things. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, we put a lot of emphasis on plants and the consciousness and the right. intersubjectivity of plants. But what about um, before plants existed or in places where there are no plants? How do we access these spaces or what like the implications of that? But the plants were here millions of years before we came. But then before that? Before that. Oh, my goodness. You or know. out in other places. <laughs> no, oof. <laughs> that, I don't know, <laughs> will be pure speculation. You know? It will be the intelligence in nature, intelligence in life. You know, I mean, what is, you know, that's a philosophical question. Uh, you know? What is intelligence? Yeah. <laughs> if mind is embedded, it's part of reality. If it is, uh, like, you know, so, yeah, sorry. Um, I, something else I thought was really interesting, as with a background in psychology, um, you sort of explained that plants could be classically conditioned to the fan could be used to pair with the light. And then if you put the fan on the plant with the absence of the light, yeah. it will be conditioned into right, right, into yeah. the fan. Yeah. Have you got any other examples of that kind of thing with plants? You have to look, Monica Galliano. She's the expert, you know. You, she has many, many, many publications. I mean, she's, by the way, again, this idea was too weird. Uh, she had a TED talk in, 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 uh, in Australia, I don't remember what the town it was. It was censure. For eight months, they didn't want to, you know, because this idea about plant behavior, plant intelligence, plant listening, plant emitting sound, or that it was too strange for them. And she always complains, look at the data. Don't look at the idea, look at the data. Now, if you can explain this in another way, please tell me. But otherwise, how can you explain this? You know, it's just simply she's a scientist and, and she's presenting this. Now, on the other hand, she's also very sensitive and she wrote this book, Those Spoke the Plant, saying that some of her experiments, scientific experiments, were inspired by the plants in dreams or in vision and so on. You know? So she was very brave to publish that book, you know, because she said, okay, that's why. You know? But on the other hand, as a scientist, it's all there in, in peer review journals. There is no question, you know, it's really hard science. Yeah. It's just, sorry to uh, sort of come back really quickly. If plants have this sort of even basic memory network in place, then you could sort of imagine <laughs> what could come next. Can we maybe test the work of memory of plants over time? <laughs> a bit of that is a joke, but the, the point is, is, you know, this opens the door to so many different things you could try with plants. It changes everything. Yeah. It changes everything because suddenly, you know, plants, you know, we are uh, what's called plant, uh, there's a concept of plant blindness, you know, and most people do not, you know, plants is something green there, but you don't look at them, you know, okay, perhaps some flowers, you know, some fruits, of course, you know, edible things, you know, but mostly it's nothing, you know, and, and, and that's our fault because in our educational system, the plants are not there. And we, if we got this idea, plants are sentient beings. Wow, that changes everything. The senses, the senses, our relationship with the forest. The, the changes our relationship about cutting the forest to put cattle in. I mean, changes everything. If we had that concept very clear, you know, sentient beings, you know, animism. You know, it could be with about changing the definition of what people consider to be sentient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because I think people hold stock in things like us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Dogs, cats, things like that. So if you maybe change the definition of sentience, then that could open the door. But uh, you maybe not you in specific, but if people just looked at yeah, sentience in different But there are like, like <laughs> this, uh, have you seen this uh, book, Other Minds, about octopus and, and the octopus teacher? My goodness, you see intelligence there. I mean, how can you deny that? I mean, it's obvious. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, okay. Just follow up on that. Um, I sometimes kind of end up thinking like words like sentience and consciousness makes things that are effective essentially not just human or more than human, very specifically human. Because when we talk about sentience or consciousness, we are deeply familiar with something. Yeah. And that's a very human way of understanding stuff. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, like when I'm having chats with my friends, I'm, I generally like to talk about information processing systems because that is not how we see ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, but our plants processing auditory information and then trying to move towards that. Um, so basically, like, this is uh, what I was going to ask, uh, ask you. Like when we talk about plants and uh, other things that are non-human, are we 
trying to understand them from too much of a human perspective. Do you think that's an issue? Yeah, yeah, but because we are human, we, we try to understand them. And it, it, it's like, uh, what is this called, this phenomenon uh, of seeing faces everywhere? And then, Pareidolia. Pareidolia, yeah, exactly. We are humans. So you see, by necessity, this is famous article by Thomas, uh, what it is like to be a bat. You know, Nagel. Negel, right, Negel. So I was reading about a different organism. I mean, the world is so completely different. It's impossible to, but the, but because it is not a, a, like ours, doesn't mean that there is not an inner world there. You know, has to be. So so for us, it's very very difficult to even imagine. Now the the, the Amazonians they, they solve this problem very nicely. They say they are like us, like us. Like us, so so, and, and, and the example it was put by Eduardo Vivaira de Castro. For a jaguar, we are the we are the jaguar. He is the human. Perspectivism. And so so so, and the whole thing about shamanism about transformation. So if you become dead, you know, you are human in another skin, you know, but it's human. So for for the inner the inner the inner world of whatever exists is human. It is, it is like us in a different form, in different skin or whatever, but still there is some sense of inner and out, you know, or some self, or, you know, which for us is very difficult to understand, to even imagine, you know. So, so uh, for the Indians, uh, for us, animality preceded humanity. You know? for, the, for them, humanity is preceding animality. So the, because of something that happened, they became different animals, but they were all humans. In the, in the origin of, uh, uh, they were all humans. They were all people, persons, you know? So, yeah, yeah. it's very interesting, completely different view. Does yeah. it extend to plants? Pardon me? Do they consider uh, plants as persons as well? Well, yes, yeah. Okay, ayahuasca, tobacco, yeah, yeah. Specific plants or all plants? It, it, it depends. I have been doing making this question to different people. Yeah, there are different answers. You know, say, oh no, okay, you know, a little grass. No, no, they don't have mother. You know, it's this and this and this powerful plants. You know, but you know, there are many different answers to that. You know? yeah. That's a very good closing sentence. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jim Louis. Goodbye, Osiris. Bye, Osiris. Bye, Peter. Bye.